When I was, I was a kid um, growing up in Richmond, I, um, our public school library, um, there was a librarian there who was just, you know, she was, looked like a librarian. She was just a wonderful person. And she introduced me to these kid biographies. And at least that's what I call them. Um, and they were biographies of very famous people, uh, but they only talked about their childhood for sort of from like age one to 18, about how they came to be. And then they stopped right when they would off, go off and do something famous, you know, like the Ringling Brothers or Thomas Edison or Thomas Jefferson or take your pick. And there were hundreds of them in the library and she introduced me to those and I read them all. You know, I read them all and we had discussions about them. and. It was um, a point of just learning how people from so many different walks of life uh, can accomplish a lot. So I've always wanted to be a fiction writer, uh, and I couldn't make a living doing it. Even when I sold a short story, they never gave me a check, and they gave me like free copies of the magazine, which are very hard to digest, by the way. So I uh, went to college and law school. Um, I felt like I had good skills for that. I was good on my feet, thinking I liked to read, research. I love to write, obviously. And I spent 10 years doing that and writing the whole time. I wrote in the middle of the night for 15 years, uh, trying to break in and, and craft a, a niche for me somehow in that field. And my first novel, the first novel that I had finished, not the first one that I attempted, paid off and now I'm able to do it full time. I write um, about things not that I think is the next trend or what people want to read about. I write about things that interest me. And I feel like if I'm going to spend a year of my life writing something, if I'm interested and I'm passionate about it, it'll come through in the pages. It's not a a cookie cutter formula book that uh, the reader has read a million times before. It's something new and fresh and different. And I think they'll go with, along with me for the ride. And um, I've learned how to tell a story reasonably well. And uh, you start with characters and build a great story around them. And that's what I try to do. And you have to, the only connection I can make with a reader on a human level is through the characters. You know, the plot is the plot. But if they don't care about what happens to the characters, you can write a great plot and have mediocre characters and nobody's going to care because they won't finish the book. Um, I traveled a lot with my first seven or eight novels all over the country, from big cities to small cities, urban, suburban, rural. And I saw um, a couple of versions of America, you know, the version of America where everyone is educated and, and makes a good living, they're well paid, and they're diverse in their opinions and knowledge. And another America where none of that was the case. Uh, it was very important for us to do whatever we could to help literacy organizations across the country. And uh, we also collect books along with Feeding America that runs the nation's food banks. And um, that, that was a very simple concept. We were getting people asking uh, for donations from the Wish You Well Foundation for literacy, but also a food component. Uh, as they explain, getting people in to read for three or four hours and work with a tutor, we need to feed them. We also need to feed their kids because they can't afford daycare or babysitters. So the whole family's coming in. Then we got the idea of partnering with Feeding America. I collect books on my book tours. We ship them out to food banks. People go in seeking food assistance, by and large, or have very little literacy skills. So they go home with food, which they need to live, um, but they bring books home, which really can change their lives. I take my kids to libraries all the time when they were younger and th now they're older, but you go into libraries and people feel like libraries are archaic. They're packed with people, packed with people particularly in bad economic times. People are going in, checking out books, they're using them as community centers, meeting places, uh, places to go online for do job applications, resumes. Uh, it's kind of, it's sort of like that perfect storm where funding is, keeps going down for libraries, but the demand for their services keep going up. And my wife and I helped start a library in our town in, in Virginia. And uh, it's a beautiful place and it's, it's packed with people but because of budgetary cuts, you know, they can't even open up on Saturday. And you go in, and instead of five or six librarians there to help you, there's one. Um, and it's really a disservice because this nation is founded on people having, you know, libraries and books and being able to read and understand a lot of different things, to participate in democracy because we all get a chance to vote and we all should have that responsibility to educate ourselves. I feel like sometimes that people back in the 1860s who would read six newspapers a day were far more informed about what was going on in their world and their politics than people today.